podcast series. Uh, today we will discuss about areas uh, that is adverse drug reactions. Okay, so to start with, this is a huge problem in the entire world. Uh, most of the times, adverse drug reactions don't get notified. Patients might get some uh, side effects of a drug, uh, but they are usually mild in nature. So patients may not be in a position to tell it to a doctor and uh, tell them about that okay they suffered from some of the side effects of a drug they accept it culturally socially that drugs can bring some side effects one thing the next thing the doctor might hesitate to notify it to the concerned authorities the industry the pharmaceutical industry uh, and so on so it's like iceberg phenomena what you see is just the very top of it which is the minor component but the major component of that remains uh, underground under the water which is not seen which is not seen so that's the thing that worries me as a doctor and as a clinical pharmacologist when I think of adverse drug reactions but remember it's a huge issue and uh, you need to be careful because you need to prescribe drugs on a daily basis and uh, anything can go wrong after prescribing drugs and uh, at the end it might have impact on your professional practice as well as the industry and the economics of uh, the country as well as for uh, the medicine uh, as such. So uh, to start with what you mean by uh, adverse drug reaction. Okay? So adverse drug reaction is an unintended noxious response to a administered medicine or a drug at normal therapeutic doses. Now we split it. It's a noxious response. So noxious is something which is not feel good, something which is not a happy ending. So uh, that's where it lies. So it's a response for a drug being given. It's unintended. A physician wants to give a drug always with a good intention, okay, so that the patients might get well. But at the end of the day, if the drug is causing some issues with the patient, it's something which is out of his hand most of the times. So it's unintended noxious response to an administered drug. Okay? When the drug is administered, these things are going to happen at normal therapeutic doses. That's the important point, at normal therapeutic doses. All drugs can become poison if you exceed them, exceed the dose levels. If I'm trying to give a veterinary dose to a human being, can it happen? Oh, no. Huh? world is a weird place but yes if you are trying to give a very high dose to normal individuals or human beings okay so uh, you know side effects or the adverse drug reactions are supposed to come but at normal therapeutic doses if a noxious stimuli is coming up then you call it as an adverse drug reaction the next thing in line is a definition on adverse drug event First of all, adverse drug reaction. The next thing is adverse drug event. So event, okay. Here too, this is a noxious response to an administered dose, administ noxious response which occurs when you administer a drug. But the causal relationship between the response and the administration of a drug may not be established, may not be established, okay. So you administer a drug to an individual the patient suffers from some or the other noxious response but you do not know whether there exists a relationship between giving this drug to the individual, administering this drug to the individual and getting this uh, what you call it as the uh, uh, noxious response. So to give an example on that, I can give example of a drug like salbutamol. Salbutamol is a drug which is given for bronchial asthma kind of respiratory conditions in which the patient gets breathless okay so trachea bronchial tree uh, constricts okay so the patients feel difficulty in breathing so salbutamol is a beta 2 agonist drug which dilates the bronchi okay it is supposed to cause that effect it is supposed to ease the breathlessness associated with bronchial asthma it has a set of adverse drug reactions it has a set of adverse drug reactions which do come when you give salbutamol but, but if the patient suffers from fever, now fever has never been documented after giving salbutamol. But if the patient suffers from fever after giving salbutamol, okay, you need to establish a relationship, 
Ideally, you need to establish a relationship between fever and administration of salbutamol to say and to conclude that, okay, this is also one more side effect. But if you cannot relate fever with salbutamol, then it becomes an adverse drug event. Over a period of time, if you start getting signals all over that, okay, fever is coming up after giving salbutamol, then you can add fever to one of the uh, uh, side effects of salbutamol but not now so you just need to be very careful event is where you cannot correlate the administration of a drug and the noxious stimulizers coming up so it can be uh, anything okay the, the, side, the, the harmful effect can be anything but you need to establish a relationship if not then it is what we call it as a adverse a drug event now that's that's important okay to, to differentiate between an event and a reaction the next in the line is a side effect of a drug okay we all call we you know before joining medicine we always used to be like you know allopathic medicine uh, is supposed to be like having a lot of side effects and so on so we take side effect of a drug as a culturally accepted socially accepted uh, way of uh, saying or knowing about uh, uh, the harmful effects of a drug so but it is slightly different so side effect is an extended pharmacological action of a drug okay so side effect is an extended pharmacological action of a drug for example you give atropine atropine is an anticholinergic drug okay for something okay but atropine on the other hand can cause dryness of the mouth which is not actually a very good stimuli, which is not actually something which is a feel good factor. Okay, so that is what we call it as a side effect of a drug. So it's nothing but an extended effect of a drug, an extended effect of a drug that you need to know when you talk of side effect of a drug. So it is nothing but augmentation of the phenomena of the drugs which can usually uh, uh, cause problems to the individual. The next is uh, about knowing that you know you can grade you can grade actually or classify actually the adverse drug reactions now adverse drug reactions are classified into a b c d e and f capital of course uh, we have not here to teach about a for apple b for ball c for cat uh, it's nothing to do with that it's not a school class uh, this is something different so A stands for type A adverse drug reaction stands for augmented uh, reactions. Okay, so augmentation of the normal effects of a drug. We just saw uh, atropine. If you give it in very large quantities, atropine will cause a lot of side effects to uh, individual. Now those are classified into augmented type of type A reactions. Okay, so type A stands for augmentation. Type B is something which is bizarre. Okay, you are not predicting it just comes up may, may be genetically the patient is prone to a specific uh, effect harmful effect of a drug for example uh, there was a antibiotic known as chloramphenicol we nowadays rarely use that drug but chloramphenicol can cause aplastic anemias in certain individuals okay so it can be a idiosynchronetic something which is genetic in origin and we'll come to that word of idiosynchronicity later on in next series to come but for now just remember that these are bizarre unpredictable reactions so b is for bizarre type b for unpredictable life-threatening conditions which can occur if uh, the patient is prone to certain of these uh, events after giving a drug now c stands for continuous uh, c capital c so type c reaction stands for continuous uh, effects uh, harmful effects of a drug that come uh, after you uh, give the drug for a very long time. So, for example, what what is example? Okay, steroids. Okay. Steroids. If you give it for a very long time, yes, bones become brittle, osteoporosis occurs. So that's kind of a type C reactions, um, adverse drug reactions that are C. Type D. Type D A B C. Then comes type D. Uh, D for D for D for D late. D not for dog. D for D late. Uh, adverse drug reaction uh, so yes if uh, uh, no delayed you stop the drug you give the drug for a long time you stopped it and after a few years maybe you see some kind of uh, uh, 
harmful effects on the individual so that's then called as a delayed reactions DE stands for end of treatment end of treatment so if you want to end the treatment uh, certain drugs you need to taper the dose okay you need to taper the dose if you don't if you just cut it off okay today you are taking a drug from tomorrow don't take a drug that shouldn't be the case you should taper the dose of a drug so that patients can respond um, in a healthy way to ending the treatment so those kind of uh, adverse drug reactions which arise if you stop the drug abruptly is what we call it as end of use of uh, usage adverse drug reactions the last would be failure of treatment so type f type f f stands for failure so failure of treatment would be example resistance to antibiotics okay. so resistance to antibiotics uh, we all know, you know antibiotics are supposed to cure bacterial infections but at times uh, resistance developed by the organisms themselves so uh, failure of treatment you give antibiotics for in treatment of infections but infections don't get cured so that's the way you call it as failure of treatment for type F so these are examples and how you classify ADS there is one more way in which um, you classify ideas that's called as mild, moderate and severe. Okay, So mild would be uh, a kind of a, a reaction where you do not require hospitalization, you do not require change of therapies, you can just move on with the normal drug and then you call it as mild. If that's a moderate reaction, you might need to change the drug, uh, you might need to stop the drug, reduce the dose. It might require a hospitalization, care, so then it becomes a moderate uh, kind of adverse drug reactions. And the severe adverse drug reactions would be something which is life threatening, comes with a lot of morbidity, mortality, uh, uh, even stopping of a drug may not be a guarantee that a person is saved. So uh, those are the kind of reactions that you classify them as severe adverse drug reactions. So two ways in which you classify capital A, B, C, D, E, F, that's one way how you classify. Next would be the mild, moderate and severe. So simple to remember as far as areas are concerned. Now next thing you, we need to move on is uh, two more things, uh, errors especially, uh, the medication errors and the prescribing errors. Um, it has been seen that you know as doctors uh, we might be knowing uh, or as healthcare professionals so is watching that these channels or uh, we all know and we all will agree that we know so many things about drugs okay we might be seniors or we might be juniors but when it comes to prescribing okay one to one prescribing of drugs um, there is a huge margin for errors there's a huge margin for errors uh, there might be some human factors or there might be some patient related factors occupational factors so on so we are not going to do those things but yes when we prescribe a drug when we prescribe a drug, we might make errors. There is a huge possibility that there might arise an error. The error can be in knowing whether exactly which drug to give. Okay. Error might be in deciding the dose of a drug. The error might be in deciding frequency of administration. Mm -hmm. Error might be in uh, how many days the drug should be given. Or in knowing exactly the route of administration of a drug. Uh, in decimal points where to add so that is something which is confusing and that has added to the problem so these are all what we call it as prescribing errors and prescribing errors can give rise to uh, adverse drug reactions you're supposed to give five milligrams of a particular tablet but you suddenly give 50 milligrams of a particular tablet okay it can happen in this world so easy okay so easy to uh, make such an error Okay, so to make such an error and it goes on okay so these are all what we call as prescribing errors errors when you write a prescription especially on the part of a healthcare professional or a doctor who is supposed to write a prescription so that's about prescription error or prescribing error the next in the line is the medication error the medication error you write a prescription your handwriting is good mine is not most of the doctors don't have good handwriting but anyway electronic prescriptions are there so no way uh, nowadays it is a different scenario uh, okay anyway you write a good prescription everything is mentioned very clearly but but 
a pharmacist who is supposed to be delivering the drugs as per your order to the patient makes a mistake. Okay, you are supposed to give a calcium channel blocker. He ran through something else and he start he gave in something other than a calcium channel blocker. You were supposed to give 50 milligrams. You have written about 50. He just gave 100 milligrams of the same tablet. So anything can happen because this is a delivery logistic system. Okay. So you write, he understands, he delivers. So there can be errors on your part or there might be errors on his part as a pharmacist when he is delivering the drugs to the patient. So these errors which arise in delivery from the pharmacist is what we call it as a medication error. The medic medication errors usually can arise with the persons like pharmacists or nurses who actually deliver the drugs to the patient. So. Uh, so there's a difference between a prescribing error, that's doctor's part, the medication errors would be something like on the pharmacy part or on the part of a nurse or any other uh, healthcare worker who is supposed to be the final delivery point of drugs to uh, the uh, patient. So those errors are then called as medication errors. Uh, I hope you liked this session. That was my quick analysis on ADL, the first of my series. We will have um, a series on adverse drug reactions uh, from today. Uh, do subscribe to my channel. Uh, keep watching. Enjoy learning.